Uh, Assalamualaikum, my name is Muhammad Kamal Suhamil Jali My name is number is 059117 We discuss about analyze the challenge of ASEAN regarding Indo-Pacific strategy First of all, we discuss about what is Indo-Pacific strategy The ASEAN Pacific and Indian Ocean regions are amongst the most dynamic in the world as well as centers of economic growth for decades As a result, these regions can continue to experience geopolitical and geostrategic shifts these shifts present, present opportunities as well as challenge. On the one hand, the economic growth of the region opens up possibilities of cooperation to elevate poverty and elevate living standards of millions of people. On the, on the other hand, the, the rise of material powers, economy and military requires avoiding the deepening of mistrust, miscalculation and patterns of behavior based on a zero-sum game. Uh, Southeast Asia lies in the center of this dynamic regions and is a very important conduit and portal to the same. Therefore, it is an interest of ASEAN to lead the shaping of their economy and security architecture and ensure that such dynamics will continue to bring about peace, security, stability and prosperity for the people in Southeast Asia as well as in the wider Asia Pacific and Indian Ocean regions or the Indo-Pacific. I will discuss about the first challenge, the dominance of US in Indo-Pacific strategy. The US seeks to establish exclusive dominance in regions, check and counterbalance existing cooperation between ASEAN and other countries with the strategic purpose of great power competition. If we not conform to the norms of ASEAN, therefore, such a plan will encounter difficulties in the region. ASEAN will not accept other power above the regional organizations. As ASEAN have its own sovereignty, peace and stability are in the fundamental interests of indigenous countries. The 2019 ASEAN's outlook on the Indo-Pacific clearly states that and should award a zero-sum game, lead win-win cooperation in the region, and uphold regional peace, stability and, and prosperity. ASEAN economy will not be decided by other countries and will be able to have its own way and its own principle. The second challenge is the, the trade war between US and China. The trade war between US and China becomes a great challenge to ASEAN as both countries are the major powers and important partners in ASEAN. The battle with two major powers will create two sides, one side with China and another one with side with US. As ASEAN in a strategic locations, US and China will compete with each other to, monopol to monopoly the product in ASEAN. Singapore's economy will suffer the most as the firm exporting to China as well as factories there and exporting product to the US will be affected. Different cases with Thailand and Vietnam as trade wars have become a silver lining for the counties. Thailand has become a manufacturing center for Japanese items such as car components and electronics that are supplied to the, to the United States as a result of the trade war. The trade war has created an unbalanced economy in Asia country. The last challenge is discrimination. Most of the countries in Southeast Asia is between the European and least developed country. Trading partners like Japan, India, Australia and the United States are developed. And the trading between countries will eventually create a discrimination. ASEAN will have a hard time to keep up with the major powers and will make ASEAN development become slower. Even though this is a great chance, great chance for ASEAN to prove itself, but it will be difficult. In a conclusion, Indo-Pacific strategy is a great step for ASEAN to move further. However, ASEAN need to find and create a suitable place that can give benefits to all ASEAN members. Indo-Pacific strategy is really crucial for ASEAN to gain another place in international arena. ASEAN as an organization that focuses on good relationship with all countries need to need to stay concentrated on its mission and vision. Thank you.